Hey, dragon lovers. Wanted to take this opportunity to talk about some different morphs that are out there, that are out there. A lot of people ask me, can you tell me what my morph is and all that good stuff? And I thought I'd just share out some videos to show you different morphs. So your two dominant morphs would be Leatherback and Dunners. And dominant simply means one of the parents need to carry it visually um, to have babies. So you could have a Leatherback female mate with a non-leather male and they would have uh, leatherback babies. Pretty simple, right? Same with Dunner. So this is a Dunner female. It's kind of hard to see here. Uh, Dunner simply means the spikes are kind of a little bit more ununiformed. Under the beard, you'll see them kind of flail out like that, see? Let me get you a non-Dunner Dunner really quick. So this female is a non-dunner. You can kind of see her beard. See how that you can kind of see it more? It's almost like this one's been sleeping on her beard and it's like bad hair day, <laughs> but with her spikes. So that's dunner, okay? And then a leather back is reduced, is reduced scale, okay? Now there's quite a wide range of leatherbacks out there. It's pretty hard to see. See how there's a lot less spikes on her on his back? Almost like it's leather. You can have what's called micro leathers, and micro leathers have no spikes on the side. Okay? Like that. And then there's things called silkies, which are completely scaleless. That's when a leatherback and a leatherback mate and have babies, they will produce silkies. And those, man, those are pretty unhealthy. We don't like to do that, um, but they do exist and they're completely scaleless. So that's a leatherback. This is actually a leatherback dunner. So he's got both morphs going for him. A little bit of the spikiness in his beard and then a leatherback there. So those are the two dominant morphs. This, ooh, this is what's called a whiplet, okay? So whiplet is kind of similar to the Xeromorph in that they are patternless dragons. The whiplet has no dark shoulder pads. So almost all dragons will have dark shoulder pads right here. So even the Zeros will have dark shoulder pads. Uh, the cool thing with whiplets is they can retain color. So they're still fairly new. So we're kind of developing more and more darker, redder, uh, more colorful whiplets than what is traditionally out there. Um, the whiplet gene was first, at least this is what the internet says, <laughs> was first discovered down in Africa. And whiplet means white lightning. Um, and they were kind of the first white dragons that people had kind of developed um, until the zeros came around. Um, so she is what's called a whiplet. And she has also dark black eyes. Ooh, come on, girl. You see that? Sorry, sweetie. Dark black eyes, which doesn't always mean a trans, but that's a pretty good indicator that they are trans. Um, translucent usually will be uh, more coloring, more rich coloring, a little bit more gummy scales. And when they're babies, you can tell on their tummies, they'll be um, very purple and translucent and very gummy when they're babies. Um, yeah, and then the other, uh, uh, morph is called hypo, hypomelanistic. And that is a reduction in melamine, which you'll find melamine or melamine, melamine or melamine, sorry, I might be saying it wrong. Um, this is what's found in the nails. So it's usually the dark pigment. And so hypo is a reduction of that pigment. So there'll be clearer nails for a hypo. And typically the colors will actually make it a little bit more rich. Um, not necessarily lighter, but it'll get rid of those dark dark colorings on it. So I'm going to show you some reds that are non-hypo to show you kind of the dark colorings on it. Okay. So this one is a trans, so usually more rich in color. And you can see there's a little more dark patches and stuff. That is because it is a non-hypo. Um, there can be, of course, darker hypos. 
but that's kind of the general thing. This is also a leather back. You can see on him. So this would be a trans leather back het for hypo. And then it's just a red dragon. Cool, huh? Let's get a uh, let's get our mail whip lit. So this is a new whip lit mail. He's a little more <laughs> feisty, but he is a just straight up whip lit, no hypo, no trans, um, and so you'll see a little bit darker coloring on his scaling. You'll have the dark nails. Can you see that there? And there you go. There's a little man, and he does not have dark eyes is normalized. That's our whiplet male. Okay. I'm stuck, but I was going to show you our zero. One second. Okay, so you saw what the whiplets are. Those are the patternless dragons. Oh dear. See my really big mess? Okay. So you saw what the whiplets are. They are the patternless, and so are the zeros, are patternless. Both patternless dragons, but this is a zero. And so they are much more reduced, not more reduced. They have no color. They range from white to dark gray. Uh, this is a hypo zero, so they're gonna be lighter in color. This is our stud adult male Abraham. He produces some really good pet babies. We're going to be using him, we're gonna be pairing him with some of our other reds when they grow up to create some really strong het zeros. And then we have another zero hopefully coming that was gonna do a different line so we can breed those two together to make really strong het, or make really strong zeros, hypo zeros. So there you go. He makes big, big babies, don't you? Yeah, those are the clear nails, patternless. Pretty much it for now. Thanks for watching, guys.